Blake Neely and Nathan Bloom, who came up with the incredible CNN theme for the 70s, the 80s, and I guess the 90s as well, right? So, well, it goes all the way back to the 60s. The 60s, Started with right. the 60s. Mm -hmm. And this goes back to our relationship with Playtone and yeah, Tom Herzog and Company. And uh, where were we? We were, at, we, were at some, we were at a screening, and they and we heard Mark Herzog say, yeah, we've got this project coming up um, about the 60s. And we were like, well, did he just announce our next thing? <laughs> uh, so I, so th on the first series, um, I did the theme and the score, and of course Nathan did additional music, which he's been doing with me for eight years now. 70s came around, and you can take it from there. They used the same theme. Yeah. The 70s, and we, we collaborated throughout that decade. Very similar format. So that was a co-credit. That was music by both of us. Yeah. And then the 80s, they kept the theme, and, and then fully uh, I took over the score. Congratulations. Wow. Thank you. What inspired the development of the theme that to me sounds like it's all encompassing. It sounds like an epic. Because I was thinking that before the I realized. The opening theme? Yeah, before I realized who did it. Well, the funny thing is, the opening theme came out of me kind of stomping my feet and saying, I'm not going to do 60s music. I don't write 60s music. I wasn't even born until the last year of the 60s. So um, I, was kind of, I was kind of being a little, you know, a little tantrum and saying, I don't want to do 60s music. And I don't think that we should in the score ever do 60s music because you're seeing it, you're hearing about it, you don't need the music to tell you. And what I said to them was that it needs to be wholly American. So the attempt with the theme was to write sort of an Americana theme song. And it just grew into this thing. Then we, we got into the score and there were discussions of, um, you know, there, it was as crazy as what if, what if Daft Punk were to score this <laughs> it was almost like a how do you modernize a decade that is now 40 50 years behind us how do you sort of modernize it well you can modernize it with the music right yeah it, but again without trying to capture the uh, the musical style of that decade um, really just scoring the drama of the scene but trying to do it in a different way did you have an idea going in as to how you were approaching that change over time? Because that's a gargantuan... Was, I think it was episode to episode. There was an... Uh, at the time, we, we knew... Well, the first one we started with the assassination of John F. Right. Kennedy. And that was such, such a powerful thing that it really set the tone. We were always happy they started with that one because it, I think it didn't air until maybe even 7th or 8th or something. But they started with it, so it really set the tone. I don't think... Had we started with, say, TV in the 60s, I don't think that theme song would have been <laughs> what I ended up writing. But John F.K. set the tone. But there was an episode that came up that, uh, what was it, where, um, where we said we were going to play them as superhero and villain against each other. It was Kennedy and... Oh, it, it, probably the, the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Cuban Missile Crisis. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cuban right, Missile right. Crisis. Good. We were yeah, like, good, yeah. let's play them... We were doing Arrow at the time, mm -hmm. and, and we were like, what if we play them, Castro and Kennedy, like we play Arrow and Deathstroke? Mm -hmm. um, and we pitched it to the producers, and they're like, uh, we, we don't know what you mean, but go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so they were willing to really experiment with you all, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. And there was, how much creative freedom do you have in yeah. Well. I mean, it, it was kind of like like a, a lot of projects where we we had the idea, we mm -hmm. ran with it, um, and then we would have them over after we did a pass uh, of the episode, and uh, and we would talk about it, um, and you know they would say, well, you know, we were kind of feeling this uh, historically mm -hmm. about this scene. We we're trying to capture this, and I, I think you may have taken it a little bit into a different direction and we'd say, oh, completely understand that. I have to ask this question because it hit my mind, the Reagan assassination uh, was really well done, but you're not Republicans. And so, <laughs> do you ever go into something, I mean, I'm just going to say this straight out. Do you find it's easy for you to divorce yourself from the political ideas when you are 
taking on a subject matter like Ronald Reagan or something. Yeah, you. Else, or, well, you, know you have to, because I mean, and we hit, we hit this. It was really well done. We hit yeah, the political, really, really the party the line thing, thing in every decade. The '60s, we had the party right. line. Um, Pretty heavy with that we had the 1968 Democratic or Republican convention that we covered in the 70s, oddly, or no, that was at the end of the 60s. Mm -hmm. So we were always up against this political thing, but no, it's like how do you score? How do you how do you score in in fictional? How do you score a villain's love interest and give him emotion when you don't believe in the character behind him? It's just storytelling. So I think. The way Nathan and I have always approached it, even in documentary form, is you're still telling the story. So you just try to have music tell the story, and you can't pick sides. I mean, we even joked about playing um, in the 70s, playing what we were going to play Nixon as a sort of a buffoon, like music would be this comedic <laughs> buffoon. And the producers were like, as much as we'd like to do that, let's be, let's walk the line. Right. It's like you, you got it, got it. And you had Reagan, so you. Uh... Yeah. And yeah, I mean, they're. They always produce the show with a certain dignity to mm -hmm. those, those people as human beings and what they contributed to history and everything. So, you know, that was that was our role. Was to, Although there I was mean, a moment, I will say there was a moment where we were listening to the Temp score. It was in the seventies, and uh, they had played. Um, they had chosen with just a temp, and a temp piece is like something the producers or an editor will just find that conveys their, their mood. They had found a piece that literally played um, Reagan as sort of an evildoer. And I pointed out to him, do you want me to play it this way? Do you want us to do this in the 70s? Do you want us to play it that way? I'm like, what do you mean? I said, well, it feels like you're, yeah, you're yeah, definitely right, drawing right, a line. Right, right. And like, oh, can you find a middle ground? So it's interesting how music literally had to smooth out the politics, if, if that makes sense. Let me ask you, what are you going to do for the 90s? The 90s oh, are that's, coming up. that's going to be this boy again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When, you, and, when, uh, I, when I say 90s, what do you think of first of all? Oh, I mean, that was my youth. That, yeah. That's really my, my decade, I yeah. think, when, it, when I really was formed as, as who I am today. So... Um, there's know, always so a great music episode. Yeah, yeah. Always a great music episode. 90s television was awesome. We were just talking about yeah. it at lunch. Yeah. I think of Kurt Cobain. Yes. Later, right? You know, yeah. I mean, um, wow. I mean, uh, boy, oh boy. There's the the end of the AIDS epidemic, mm -hmm. or the, mm -hmm. the AIDS decade. Yeah. Um, what was else was in the 90s? Oh, wow. Uh, Clinton? Yeah, oh, sure. first, first goal for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, you know that they're going to end the series with Monica over the lights. Yeah, I was going to say they're going to end it with Gore. Yeah, Gore Bush. Uh, yeah. yeah, Bush Gore. Sure. Or they'll well, start the odds because you know they're going to do the odds. Yeah. yeah. So they call it the odds. Two thousand. Yeah, because two thousand. Right. That's right. The election was in ninety nine. Yep. Right. Um, yeah, the Supreme Court decision was two thousand. Right, so you yeah. you got it that. Look, it'll be fun. They're always fun. They're oh, yeah. they're they're fascinating. When, and I think what what we enjoy about it too is we work all day long with fake fictional mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, entertainment and but good this, stuff though. Oh, great stuff! Yeah. and and we try to make it as real and human as possible. And when you get one of these episodes, you go, wow. I forgot that happened. I forgot that happened. Yeah, and that's what struck me because I thought, to me, I thought you guys are custodians of history, and, I'm, and really you are because that's for a lot of people who aren't our age who watch that. That's their first introduction to these things because it's a reminder. A lot of this stuff was forgotten, you know. I mean, that's that's a powerful position to be in. You're, you're, do you think about that when you say that? You think, you know, this is really well. A, this thing will be played in schools and yeah, museums. Yeah. Yeah. On on loop for a long, long time, long after they've you know kind of gotten bored with some of the other characters we scored. But um, no, it's an important piece. Yeah, and I'm really glad that we held the line on not being queried yeah, about it I think because you did. Yeah. man, each year you have to. It's like now let's learn a '90s grunge style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They get Emmys for this sort of thing. Don't know. We don't. I think we already we already tried already uh, tried on the theme song. It didn't it didn't, <laughs> didn't pass muster. Well, I want to congratulate you all. Uh, I'm glad you. you found it. Yeah, definitely. I I, I thought 
We're very proud of you. Thanks. Thank, thank you.